Hello everybody and do not touch the yellow pin in the position of the uh, texture. You can hit the, the red one and the green one and I believe the blue one but do not dare touch the yellow one. It will mess up a lot. I had to change the... Uh, this is the second time I'm recording this. Um, you, make, you make sure that everything is fine. It might not look as good. <laughs> you see I had to mess up a little bit here. But uh, do not touch the yellow one. It messes up your uh, texture. This is what you will have at the end of this tutorial. A fully drivable custom track. It doesn't count the lap, but uh... Yeah. Awesome. Welcome, and we're going to start in the second part, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a little thing that you need to do in order to uh, make stuff to go right. Go into your control panel, go to the uh, clock language and region, click the change date, time, or number formats. It depends on what Windows version you have. I'm not sure, I don't think anything works in uh, Apple like this anyway, so... If you're having Apple, I don't know what to do, but make sure your region format is in English United Kingdom. It has to do with the decimal point that some countries use a uh, comma and some countries use a dot. You need a dot. Uh, make sure it's English United Kingdom, restart your PC, and that should be fine. Let's get cracking. <laughs> so you have the track here. I've changed the textures a little bit there, but there's no biggie. Um, I had to change some textures in order to get things right, but do not change. Do not, do not use this yellow thing to translate to do this stuff because it does not work. Whoops! I should turn off my Skype. At least do it like I'm not disturbed. All right. Do not do it. It will, it will um, mess up in the uh, importing later. All right. So what are we gonna do now? Is we're going to export this track. It's nice little chat. Oh no, I messed it up, didn't I? That's bad. Um, whoopsie, you're not seeing anything. Oh, this is because I um, I did. I'm I'm re redoing the take basically. So, don't worry, don't worry. This is exactly where you left off. Where you left off. I believe. I hope so. There's one line on the bottom here. Whoops. There we go. Okay, <laughs> let's just get going. Let's just save. So you have this. You end. You end off with something like this. Um, good. Now what you want to do is you do file OBG exporter and export it as track, and convert all textures to PNG. Now what you do is you select everything. You copy paste and you paste it like two extra times, like I did before. Um, you hit the export and you call it like track underscore uh, big. This is in order to free up space in a different thing later on. Now what we need is a map model. The model of the map in Mario Kart Wii is not actually uh, an image. It's actually a 3D model. And the game um, renders a an image for the map. So what you want to do is you want to remove everything that's basically not uh, your track. So anything that's like a wall or floor or whatever that that's like not a track that you don't want in your minimap, remove it. So right now I am left over with only the track parts. So I can do this file object explorer track underscore map. Make sure you select no for the pet textures. And that should then work. Hooray! Alright. Now what you want to do is you want to uh, go into BRRES tool which is uh, BRES is uh, the name for a 3D model file with textures and everything else included. You hit File, New, or click this little New button. File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ, Track. Just the normal one. Hit Click, Course Model, because import this file as a Mario Kart Wii course model. This affects the naming scheme. So, in order to do this, okay, then you click on the course, and you can have a look at the 3D model. If you did not change your uh, your uh, date and time and number format, this might have caused a crash. 
uh, in the program itself. It doesn't crash your PC or anything. It crashes the program, which is what it did before. I only found this out today, literally today, because I was messing around with stuff. But it was normally just like freezing. So yeah, um, if you had messed around with the uh, yellow uh, thing, then these textures will, would all look very messed up. And I believe they should be fine for now. So as you can see, it looks like a nice track, right? It's a, it's a nice track. So yeah, use the joystick to go around. Looks good. Looks nice. There we go. And then you hit save button, and then you save it as a track. Just a track, all right. And then you file new, and then do file import wavefront obj. Import the map. Click map model. Hit import, and here is the map. It's uh, just a small thing with like no textures. File save as track underscore map. Simple as that. And now what you want to do is, uh, I'll have to look this up, wait a second, be right back! Alright, here I am, and I, I can't actually zoom in, so that's a, a bummer. Uh, you c you go into your extracted uh, market we uh, file, market we ROM, whatever, uh, go into files, race, course, and here's the courses. Now what you want to do is, we're just going to use uh, Luigi circuits, we're going to drag beginner course into our folder here. We're going to keep things nice and organized. Yep. And here's the track. This is what we're going to use. So we're going to work off of Luigi's circuit. So let's open it up. And right now what we're going to do first is we're going to import the um, course model. Right click. Open with. Uh, no wait. <laughs> right click. Replace. So you're going to use your track model as the course model. Then you right click on the map model. Replace track map and it has now replaced the models. Uh, the thing is with Mario Kart Wii is it doesn't actually change the uh, collision so it would still have the collision file of Luigi Circuit but it would look like it would be uh, your, tra your track. So that's not what we want, we want the collision file to be correct with our track so this is a thing why we changed the names of these uh, materials to a specific name so we could know what things are. I'll show you right now. Um, you right click the course of KCL. No, wait, you double click the course of KCL. Hit File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the track Big, Import, and I believe we could leave it like this. Hit OK and hit Save. Um, so now you've basically done, well, you, you've basically just increased the uh, the the size of this KCL. Now you could close this off and whoops I should save and then close it off and then open beginner course with uh, SS modifier instead of the SS Explorer. Now you hit the plus plus course model 3D models and here's your course. You can zoom in like this and here's your track. Use right click to uh, rotate the camera, use left click to zoom around, use the scroll wheel to zoom, or this little bar here. Uh, yeah, so here's your track. Looks good, doesn't it? Awesome. Take a look, wireframe mode, or, I don't know, clockwise, counterclockwise, I don't know. So, then what you do is you select all your track files. So these are like the, the polygons, the little things, I mean like, these are all the different things that your track is made of. So you select them all using holding shift and selecting them all H hit tools create key C KCL now this is why we changed the materials the texture names to these different things so we have track sketch up road normal which is just the road we have road finish which is the finish line which is just the road uh, wall is obviously not a road so you select a uh, wall off-road grass is off-road wait actually I'm probably I'm gonna take the top one uh, out of bounds grass. It's actually not the out of bounds thing here, because this out of bounds um, is basically an area you will fall through. Um, it, it counts you out of bounds, but it doesn't. But it makes you fall through it. So if you hit solid fall, it'll count you out of bounds, but your your character will stay on top of the terrain. So you're gonna use that and hit OK. Uh, don't uh, don't uh, bother with these case cell problems. So it's fine. Hit file. Hit save and it's fine. Hit file, hit save. Correct! Awesome! 
So then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, open this back up into the uh, SS Explorer open up and then go to the course of KMP. Now what we've done is we have basically loaded in the uh, correct model files we have uh, added, uh, edited the collision file now the only thing what we need to do left is um, set a starting point what have I done? what have I done? I've done nothing uh, so <laughs> The only thing we need right now to test it is set a uh, spawn point, a beginning spawn point, where the races will start on the track in order to see if it works. So I have this course of KMP. This has all the data for the, those points. So you hit export, export it to somewhere, and then you open it with KMP Cloud, which is a program I've shown you before. Now. Uh, you can go to the start positions and you'll see this this little dot here in the view menu this is the start position you can hit the edit rotations to see the rotation of it but obviously um, we want to put this on the correct position on our track so what we do is we hit view background import obj and then we select our track obj hit import and there it is perfect ah uh, wait it didn't what? it didn't actually do the uh, Okay, road finish line. We're going to make this a color of like FF, FFF, FF, like that, and hit import. There we go. Now I can see the uh, actual starting line. Uh, we're going to put this little, little tiny dot right in front of the starting line. So you zoom using the scroll wheel, this bar, and you left click, I mean, you right click to your, your middle mouse click to scroll around. So you're going to put this right in front of the starting line. This is where the players start from. I could show you a little um, thing. Actually, I'm gonna use um, use a little tool that I have. So um, this is the starting line. All right. So right now, this point right here is where the uh, the player in time trial mode will start. But obviously, if you're playing in like uh, if you're playing in versus mode or Grand Prix, the players will like spawn on like these areas and they'll spawn over here and over here and over here in like a, a diagonal kind of thing basically they'll spart, start somewhere in like an area behind the points so you want to put the point in front of the finish line that's basically the deal alright then you want to hit view and hit rotations and we're going to put it right to the right like that and as you can see it's very close to 90 degrees and to make it a little bit more perfect we're going to go to the rotation y make it 90 degrees. I'm actually going to explain how these points work. The position X is the position in units from the center and I, I believe I could show you here. Um, here is the model and I believe this point where the uh, red and green and blue axis meet is zero. It's zero. So keep that in mind so our zero point is somewhere over here so we count like the x value is uh, units from left to right minus x means it's to the left of the zero point plus means it's to the right of the zero point uh, the z is the position um, like upwards and downwards uh, upwards is i believe plus no upwards is minus and downwards is plus and then there's the y value and the y value is basically how high up this point is because if this point is too low you'll start below the track and you'll fall out of bounds but if you start on above the track very far you'll have to fall all the way down so how do we fix this there's a whole complicated way of doing object exporting but there's also a way where you um, take this program called magic y which you should have installed for uh, magic y um, is works together with KMP Cloud and can basically generate the position of the Y. Basically, what it does is it drops a stone. I could show you actually. Let's make a new. Um, no, I'll not save this. I'll show you real quick how this works. So, say you have two uh, areas. Okay, you have two little segments, two platforms. I'm gonna show you right now. So. I should probably do actually is like remove this here and say this is the track. Now what it does is 
Um, I'm gonna use this again. It's very useful. Um, what it does is it takes the x and y coordinates away from the zero point, and it drops from very high. It drops a point downwards, and it waits until it hits a point on the floor. At that point is the exact point where it's going to select the y-axis. Where it takes a look at the uh, the blue line here. It takes a look and it takes that data. The only problem here is that if you have a ceiling above your road, you'll have to change a little bit of the uh, the values because what it then does is it drops it down, but it hits the ceiling before it hits the ground, so it's going to put it here. That's the only little problem because you want actually want it to go all the way down and set it down here, but it doesn't. So here's a little quick explanation on that. So what you do is you start up Magic Y. You um, Oh, the script is already running. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> I've done it before. You click Magic Y, and it selects, whoops, it asks to select an OBJ file, which uh, is just the track OBJ we use. Select uh, Scale 1, because we have not done anything else. And now it's running uh, in a little icon in the uh, bottom right of your screen. Since I'm using two monitors, you can't actually see it. But if you right click it, you can exit it. Basically, it's running now. If you select the row by clicking the button in front of the row and hit Control Y, it'll generate the correct position on the Y axis for you to use. And so now we have the correct position on the X, Y, and Z in correct rotation in order to play it in the game. So now you save it, go to your beginner course, and then import it by right clicking replace and selecting it Hit file save and now you've done everything to test it you have um, imported the models the collision and set the correct position with the starting point and now you're ready to put this in revolution and test it on your Wii alright here we are um, with uh, dolphin emulator because um, I've tried it on my on my Wii, but it just doesn't work really like that because uh, my Wii is downstairs and I can't reach it. If you have um, Revolution and you have your Wii uh, right next to your laptop or whatever you're doing this on, then okay. But right now, for the thing is that I'm you need to do a lot of testing later on. So I'm gonna use the emulator just to test, uh, just for testing purposes. Um, because otherwise I have to run around and capture all the footage. I can't live commentary uh, more, uh, the actual Wii footage because there's no microphone downstairs. So, not really. I could transfer everything, but that just take ages to set up and I have to redo that every single time. So let's take a look. Here's our uh, track. In the Mushroom Cup. Let's see. Let's hope that it's going to work. It should work. Okay, and wow. Hmm. This is very strange. So apparently all the textures are half size, which is very strange. I wonder why. I have no idea actually why all these textures are like half size. I I don't know. Um, don't mind the lack of two here. It's just a little thing. Uh, so this is strange. It all the textures are half size. I wonder why. I'll I'll make sure to fix that. I'll I'll have that in the end of this episode, which will be like in 10 seconds here. So yeah, it works. You can drive on it. You can't really do a lap or anything. And if we touch this grass, we go out of bounds. So yeah, that works. I guess. Let's have another try at this. You know, it works. It works. Uh, good. Right? Does it? Maybe. I don't know. Nice, right? Yeah. But the textures are all size, so I'll have a look at that. Um, I'll be right back. Like, are you kidding me? What is this? Look what happened. I upscaled every texture times two, so I, I increased the... Um, well, this sound is quite loud. I don't know. I increased the volume... What the... 
the size of each texture in SketchUp times two, and now it is times two. What is this madness? So it, what? Huh? So now every texture is twice as big. But I mean, four times as big as they used to be in the game, but twice as big as they used to be loaded in. So I just have no idea, no idea what happens. I'm gonna retry and scale the textures down, but add one meter protection. Maybe there's a little bit of a bug. I don't know. I don't know what what could have been this. I'm gonna scale them back down and re-export it. Maybe once in a while the export function doesn't work well in SketchUp, the plugin. It's obviously all these programs are made by us, people like us, not by a big company. And there will be always bugs in in these programs. So I'm gonna retry it again and export this SketchUp to OBJ once again and hopefully by just changing the textures back magically it'll be normal I don't know it's never happened before in my custom tracks wow okay I fixed it <laughs> and all I did was literally uh, I rounded off the uh, the dimensions to have no uh, comma numbers no numbers after the comma and afterwards it worked perfectly fine I don't know what happened I just I literally made it back to normal all the texture all the texture sizes and then I just rounded them off <laughs> so no decimals after the comma so what I'm what I meant is you have the texture hit edit and make sure that it ends on zero zero which is completely delete the zeros it puts it back make sure you have nothing behind this point nothing just keep it zero zero that apparently fixed it if it still doesn't work for you then just mess around the texture make this like uh, make this four or something to make it just a bit different than before it's just a bug and yeah that or after the dot or point maybe that's, that's the case where it's I don't know I fixed it just make sure your your uh, texture sizes in SketchUp are a round number with no uh, 1.5 or something, 1.6. Don't make it. Just make it a one or a two. Not 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 in between. Hey, it looks it looks good, doesn't it? Look at that. Actually, let me. I guess I don't know how long this video is gonna take. I'm gonna add one more little thing because, as you can probably tell. It looks so grainy back there. I hope we can fix that. I'll give you. A, I'll have a test, and I'll s tell you how to how to fix that because it's, it looks very grainy. Ugh. You know what? I'm gonna show you right away. So, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go into the beginner course, course model textures. Now, most of these textures go fine, except for the grass textures. So as you can probably tell, if I click on it, this game uses mip maps. What mip maps is, it, it basically uh, changes the texture as you get further away. So the further away you are, the lower quality the texture is. That makes, obviously, loading textures and stuff a lot faster, makes them look better. But for this, as you can see, the further away it gets, the more grainy it gets. It looks very grainy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export all these. So this is level 2, so I'm going to export this as a grass two zoom out one more export it grass uh three export it grass uh four and one more export grass five oh yeah I've done this before exporting whoops no grass five all right there we go and I'm gonna do that for dark grass as well ex wait this one is not necessary because it's the no original texture export gra D grass 2 D stands for dark D grass 3 and D grass 4 and D grass 5 all right and then I guess that'll be it for the time being we should have something somewhere here we go so I'm gonna select all these Textures and drop them into my uh, image editing program. Oh god, it's kind of okay. There we go. So here's the light ones and the dark ones. 
So I'm gonna select this and do effects, blurs, unfocus. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> effects, blurs, unfocus. Let's have a look. I'm going to take focus level uh, one, I guess. Let's see what the difference is. This is normal. This is afterwards. So then, what you do is you hit effect, repeat, or control F, and just make all these look a lot less grainy. And then you hit Control S and you save them all. I've got an idea to do this. Save and OK, OK, OK. I just hit Enter, 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 Enter. Oh yeah, I'm using Paint.net, which is um, basically a better version of uh, the original Microsoft Paint. Uh, now I'm going to import. Whoops. I'm going to import level two. Import grass two. No. I believe that should make the other ones still be the same. Yep. So you hit no on the thing where it asks if you want to apply on every level. So then we have grass um, three. Wait, this is the uh, no. This is grass. Grass three. No. And then grass four. Grass four. No. And then grass five. No hit save and right now if you zoom out you'll see that the texture becomes more blurry hopefully it'll still look fine in game I'm not sure I, this is my first test I'm gonna give it so it looks a lot less grainy it just move, looks more smooth so I'm gonna do that the exact same with the dark grass and I'll be right back with you when I save and put this back into the ROM here we go again let's have a look it looks a lot better it looks kinda better but still kind of crappy um, but that's just the thing with SketchUp textures they are like crappy they look crappy in game um, and that's just that's just the texture um, what you should do is actually look up some textures on the internet but since I was just doing this for a tutorial I took these textures but I believe it looks a little, little bit better than before a little bit <laughs> anyway that's it for this episode guys um, I hope you liked this episode if you did then go ahead and leave a like and the next episode will feature the KMP which is basically the heart of the custom track it will um, it defines all the routes for the uh, CPUs and items and checkpoints and everything it will make the laps count it will add objects to the track basically everything that the track needs from this point on uh, it'll probably feature multiple episodes because it takes a while. <laughs> so, I'll see you in the next video.